Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are looking at some budget colorless lands. I've done lands before. Uh, so hopefully you can take a look at some of those and see some of the dual and tri lands that are good. But anyway. Okay, first up, budget. I mean $2 or less according to the TCG market value. Not a sponsor as usual. Why use these? Colorless lands provide a lot of functionality that colored lands cannot. Remember, you not need all colored mana to cast most spells. Again, most spells will be like, you know, four and a blue. Four, you don't need the colored mana to pay, right? Colored mana is nice when you need it, and when you don't, it doesn't matter. So, I, I see people get really uh, up in arms about colors mana on things sometimes, and I'm like, eh, but you know. You do need to make sure you have the colored mana, but once you have it, it's, you know, it's done. So, I don't know. First of all, Field of Ruin. This is by far the most well-known one. I want to acknowledge I am doing that. Uh, I've had people comment recently. In the number five spot, I usually put the most well-known card. And I do that intentionally, so yeah. Don't get angry that you know feel the rune, please. Anyway, okay. So you can tap it to add one colorless or pay two and tap it and sacrifice it to destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. And then each player draws or uh, searches for a basic land card and puts it into the battlefield, then shuffles. Okay, each player. So you're helping the whole table, kind of but you're hurting. Hopefully, this is like very much a counter card, right? This is something you put in your deck in case someone plays like Cabal Coffers or something, and you need to destroy that land. It, it's gonna happen pretty fre frequently. I think having a card like this, even if it's just in case, it won't be part of your like plan A, but it's a, a good defensive measure. And uh, frankly, it's a card that lets you uh, draw an extra basic or search out an extra basic land. So even that isn't a waste and taking out a major threat from an opponent is fully worth it. In a one versus one, this is great. In a commander game where you got four players, a little more sketchy, I admit. But anyway, 15 cents. Okay, so here we've got Escape Tunnel. This is a very good card. It was printed recently. Uh, I got uh, one commenter got very angry at me for uh, bringing up cards that were printed in the last two years. I don't really understand why that's not a thing. Um, I don't really consider when the cards were printed at all. I, I don't care. I'm just showing the cards. <laughs> anyway. Here, its first ability, it has two sacrifice abilities, which is actually pretty cool. Um, its first ability is basically like a Terramorphic Expanse or Evolving Wilds. Uh, I, if you have those in a deck, I would definitely include this as well, because it do, you can sacrifice it, tap, sacrifice it, and then just like search for a basic land. So it kind of has that function. But it is better than those two for this reason. Uh, you can sacrifice it and also give target creature with power two or less, make it unblockable, right? It can't be blocked this turn. For one turn, unblockable. So if you've got something like Quietus Spike that reduces their, just cuts their life in half, it's very easy to get that through. Excuse me. And then, yeah. But having two different sack options on one card in general is very good. Having it on a land is kind of crazy. Anyway, that is a whole 14 cents. Uh Karn's Bastion. Okay, so again, you can tap to add one colorless and uh, four and tap to proliferate. All right, having proliferate on a land Super powerful. Any deck where you're using a lot of counters, definitely put this in because you're going to be able to 
Remember, this is an ability. You can activate it anytime you want. You can leave mana open, have counters ready, or even just like make it look like you have something. So the other players leave you alone, and then right on their on the last player's end step, be like, okay, proliferate now. Also, I used this recently with the uh, Kerumonix deck. Infect, right? This is like an extra inf poison counter on all of your opponents. If you're using Infect, which is not popular, I admit, but if you're using it, this is a great thing to have as well. One last thing I want to point out is that 4 and tap on a land that uh, creates mana is really 5 and tap, right? You're not getting the one colorless. Instead, you're using it to pro proliferate. So yeah, it kind of costs one extra because you're not getting that mana. But anyway, 135 for that one. War Room. Okay, this I admit is also a very probably well-known one. The reason why I'm putting it on the list is that the price has dropped a lot, okay? This is one where I want to include it because the price is like nosedived. Why did the price nosedive? Because I have two copies of it, that's why. But anyway, so you can tap and add one colorless or pay three and tap. Pay life equal to the number of colors in your commander's color identity to draw a card. Men or card draw on a card. Just a very, very, very powerful combination. Really, that's kind of like the two major problems every deck have is, is mana or card draw. And this can do both, right? Uh, the paying life, if you've got like a Wooberg deck, that's not a good idea. If you're running any kind of even mono or even dual color deck, I'd say it's probably worth the card draw or the card draw option. Once again, it's actually four tap and pay life <clears throat> because you're not making the mana from this land. Still very, very good and having an extra card draw. Once again, as an ability as well, so you can leave mana open and have something to do with it right before your turn begins, you're drawing an extra card. Just super valuable. Anyway, 107 for that one. Oh, please hit like and subscribe. Also, what is your favorite colorless land? Um, I'm gonna make more of these videos, so I do have a lot more on my, left on my list, but I, I am always on the lookout for more, and I'm always surprised at some of the things I haven't seen are maybe things that are very like, common knowledge to other people. And vice versa, I guess. Okay, the number one here is Thespian Stage. So, you again, it can add one me colorless mana if you want, or pay two and tap it. It becomes a copy of Target Land, except it has this ability. That's just crazy good. That, that has so many uses, like any really dangerous fancy land someone plays, you can just make a copy of it and you're, uh, you know. Copying land I think is an uncommon and underrated ability. So it's something that a lot of games, a lot of decks will have like one or two flashy lands in there. You can just make that your land. Just so good, anyway. 88 cents for that one. Field of Ruin, 15 cents. Very common card, but very good still. Escape Tunnel, recent one, 14 cents. Karn's Bastion. Again, if you're playing a uh, counters deck or something that has like Infect or something like that, this is almost like an auto include, I feel. War Room, um, any deck where you're running like, especially monocolored decks, you should have this just even for the card draw option. You don't have to do it. Worst case scenario, it makes mana, which is what lands are supposed to do, right? And Thespian Stage, making a copy of lands. Just, again, I think people underestimate how uncommon of an ability that is. Okay, 
So anyway, there you go. Take it easy.